Hello learners. Welcome to this series. Uh, today we are going to look at the concept of relative speed. This is actually a very easy concept and in the case of relative speed what happens is uh, there are more than two bodies or two objects which are moving either in the same direction or in the opposite direction. Right? Now what students tend to do is they tend to mug up these formulas that are available for relative speed without understanding how these uh, formulas came into being right? or without understanding what happens in the background. So my attempt today is to demystify this whole concept so that uh, based on the understanding that you gain from this video, hopefully you should be able to solve any kind of question on relative speed that you might encounter uh, for your placements or uh, management entrance exams or any of those exams, right? So let's start. So let's look at the first example, right? Uh, or the first case rather. So in the first case, both A and B here are moving in the same direction. Initially, before they start moving, A and B are separated by a distance D kilometers. A is moving with the speed S1 kilometer per hour and B is moving with the speed S2 kilometer per hour. Now, the first basic concept to understand is that for A to catch B, or for A to meet B, definitely S1 should be greater than S2. That is, A should be moving at a greater speed compared to uh, B. Now, if S1 is less than S2, what will happen? A will never catch B. Okay. So, first case, when S1 is less than S2, A will never catch B. When S1 is equal to S2, that is, A and B are moving with the same speed, they will keep on moving with the same distance between them that is d kilometer distance will be maintained if s1 is equal to s2 that's how they keep moving now if s1 is greater than s2 that is when a is finally going to catch b or meet b at some point in time and uh, i think you would know the formula of relative speed right at what time will they meet or how much time will A take to meet B that's given by T is equal to distance by speed which is distance here is D okay and because they are moving in the same direction we take speed as S1 minus S2 right that's what we know so this is the time in which A will meet B that's what we all know right this is the formula that we have learned now let us take an example and see how this formula came into being, right? Or rather, understand the underlying concept. So I've taken an example here. Imagine that a police is trying to catch a thief, right? And uh, they're separated by 100 kilometers. Let's look at each different scenario that can uh, arise here. In the first case, imagine the police is moving at 10 km per hour and the thief is moving at 20 km per hour. So, as we discussed before, here the speed of the police is lesser than that of the thief, right? And hence, the police will never catch the thief or he'll never meet the thief. Why? Because imagine this is how they're starting off, right? This is the police and thief. And they're starting to move, okay? And you see that because the police has a higher speed the distance between them they keep on increasing right because the police is moving at some speed and the thief is moving at a higher speed and they keep on going away from the uh, police let's try and see this so let's look at what happens after the first hour okay in the first hour how far does the police travel he travels a distance of 10 kilometers right and how far does the thief travel? Thief travels a distance of 20 kilometers. Keep in mind that the initial distance between them is 100 kilometers. So here the police travels some distance of 10 kilometers, whereas the thief travels in this direction. He travels a distance of 20 kilometers. So now at this point, what is the separation between them? 
this because the police has already covered 10 kilometers out of the entire 100 kilometers this will be 90 kilometers right 90 plus 10 100 and the thief has moved from this initial point and traveled 20 kilometers more so now at this point after one hour the police is 10 kilometers away from his initial point okay he is at this spot and what is the separation between them 90 plus 20 which is 110 kilometers initially what was the separation between them it was just 100 kilometers but after one hour you see that the distance between them has increased by 10 kilometers and it has become 110 kilometers why is that in one hour the police travels 10 kilometers right because the speed is 10 kilometers per hour so he has moved 10 kilometers in this direction the thief at the same point has moved 20 kilometers in the same direction okay so the distance here is 90 plus 20 right why 90 100 minus 10 the 10 kilometers that the police moved so 90 plus 20 the separation between them has increased like i demonstrated it has become 110 kilometers right that's because the thief is moving at a higher speed let's look at the next case now let's look at the case where the police and the thief are traveling at the same speed of 10 kilometers per hour now in that case what happens i let me try and illustrate this uh, using a visual method right so imagine this is the police and the thief right now when they're traveling they're traveling the same speed right so the distance between them doesn't change so no matter how far they travel they're always going to travel with 100 kilometers between them the separation between them is going to remain the same right let's look at the first hour so after one hour how much distance does uh, the police travel because he's traveling at 10 kilometers per hour he'll reach some point here right which is 10 kilometers away from his starting point and the thief will also reach some point which is 10 kilometers from his starting point so after one hour what is the separation between them the separation between them is still 100 kilometers right because this is 90 kilometers that is the distance between the current position of the police and the initial position of the thief the thief has obviously moved 10 kilometers in one hour so the distance between them is still 100 kilometers so at, at the starting point the distance between them was 100 kilometers and even after one hour after they have moved 10 kilometers each in the forward direction in the same direction the distance between them is still 100 kilometers right so the police is never going to catch the thief in this scenario as we saw because the distance between them is going to remain constant because they are traveling at the same speed uh, hope this is clear let's look at the next case In the next scenario, the police is going to travel at a speed higher than that of the thief, right? So in the first two cases, uh, what we look at, the police was traveling at a speed lesser than the thief. So obviously the thief is going to speed away with every hour. Uh, in the second case, we look at a case where the police and the thief are traveling at the same speed. So the separation between them is going to remain constant and they're going to move like that uh, for whatever time they're going to travel, right? Now the third case, uh, where the police is traveling at a speed higher than that of the thief. Obviously, this is when the police is going to catch the thief. Now let's look at what happens uh, in each hour, right? Uh, so in the first hour, the police is going to travel 20 kilometers, right? They are traveling in this direction, obviously, and the thief is going to travel 10 kilometers, right? So, say the police reach this point. This is police, and this is thief. So, now at this point, what is the distance between them? Because the police has traveled 20 kilometers the distance between this current position of the police and the initial position of the thief is 80 kilometers okay and the thief has traveled 
a further distance of 10 km. So what is the separation between them now? Separation has reduced to 90 km. That means the separation reduced by 10 km. Remember initial separation was 100 km and after one hour the separation reduced to 90 km. What happens in the next hour that is R2 again the police will travel another 20 km right and the thief will travel only a distance of 10 km in this direction. So at this point what is the separation between them? This is 60 kilometers, right? The let me name this P1 and P2. So the position of the police after the second hour and the distance between that position and the thief's initial position, right, at the start of the journey, that will be 60 kilometers. And how far has the thief traveled now? He has traveled an additional 10 kilometers in the second hour. So the separation between them is 60 kilometers plus 20 kilometers, which is Separation 1 was 90, separation 2 right now is 60 plus 20, which is 80 kilometers. So, I think you can clearly see that in every hour, the separation between them is reducing by 10 kilometers. In the first hour, the initial separation of 100 kilometers reduced to 90 kilometers. In the second hour, it reduced to 80 kilometers, a further reduction of another 10 kilometers, right? Similarly, how long will it take for the police to uh, catch the thief or reach the thief or coincide with the position of the thief? It will take 10 iterations like this, right? Because uh, the distance is 100 kilometers, each hour 10 kilometers is reducing, the gap is reducing by 10 kilometers. So, it will take 10 iterations or 10 hours for the police to coincide with the thief or to catch the thief, right? That is what you find out by using the formula of relative speed when two bodies are moving in the same direction, right? What is that formula? You find out T is equal to D by S1 minus S2. What is D in this case? 100. What is S1? 20. What is S2? 10. So this is what? 100 divided by 10, right? Which is 10 hours. Correct. Here we worked that out. We saw that it will take 10 iterations because in one hour the gap is reduced by 10 kilometers. So hence 10 hours. And using the formula also, you found out that the time required to catch the thief is 100 divided by 20 minus 10, right? Because that gap, the distance of 10 kilometer that is covered is the difference in their speed, owing to the difference in their speed, right? because the police has a 10 km per hour advantage over the thief, right? So that is why the police is going to catch the thief in 10 hours. Hope this concept is very clear to you. I have also demonstrated it. Uh, if you want to look at the visual representation, what is, what is going to happen? Imagine this is the initial separation between them. Obviously the thief is traveling at a lower speed. So gradually the police will close in on the thief and coincide with him or catch him. Right? Correct? That's because the police is moving at a higher speed. So, hope this is clear. Let's look at the next scenario when they are moving towards each other, right? Or moving in opposite directions. So, what is the uh, formula of rate of speed that you know uh, in this case? The time taken for them to meet each other will be d by s right d here is 100 kilometers i have assumed that the separation between them is 100 kilometers like we usually assume and the speed when they are moving towards each other is s1 plus s2 that's what we have learned right uh, so i've assumed the speed of 10 kilometers for the 10 kilometers per hour for the police and 10 kilometers per hour for the thief so 10 plus 10 right which is 5 hours, correct? 100 by 20. So they meet each other in 500, 5 hours, correct? Uh, why is this? Because in 1 hour, the police is covering a distance of 10 kilometers. 
and the thief is covering a distance of 10 kilometers. So the distance between them reduces to 80 kilometers per hour. Sorry, 80 kilometers, right? So in one hour, the distance between them or the gap between them is reducing by 20 kilometers. So hence, it will take five vibrations to for them to meet each other or for the gap to become zero, right? So essentially, in one hour, the police is moving a distance of 10 towards the thief and the thief is also moving a distance of 10 kilometers. So hence, five hours, okay? So let's look at it uh, hour by hour for uh, uh, maybe two hours, right? So, in hour one, the police is moving towards this direction, towards the thief at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. So, let's assume this is the position, right? Which is 10 kilometers from his starting point. The thief is also moving in this direction at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. So, the thief reaches some point here, which is 10 kilometers from his starting point. Let's assume this is T1. So what is the distance P1, T1? That is the gap between the police and the thief. After one hour, it is 100 minus 10 plus 10, which is 80 kilometers, right? So the gap between them is 80 kilometers. After hour one, after the second hour, what happens? The police moves a further distance, 10 kilometers towards the thief. The thief also moves a further distance, further 10 kilometers towards the police. So now what is the separation between them? 10 plus 10, 20. 10 plus 10, 20. 20 plus 20 is 40. 100 minus 40 is 60 kilometers. So you see that in one hour, the gap is reduced by 20 kilometers. Again, in the second hour, the gap is reduced by a further 20 kilometers. So hence, it will take five iterations, right? To close a gap of 100 kilometers. So, right? So this is what we find out when we use the formula uh, T is equal to D by S1 plus S2. Why? Because both are moving towards each other. Both are negating 10 kilometers or reducing 10 kilometers each out of the total distance of 100 kilometers. That's why we add the speed. Hope this concept is clear, right? Uh, we have looked at four different cases, uh, three subdivisions in the first case when they are moving in the same direction and one case where they are moving towards the same direction, right? Uh, hope you guys understood how the rate of speed formula is derived and what is the underlying concept. Please try and practice a lot of problems based on this concept. In my next video, I am going to look at how clocks work, right? And we'll solve some problems on clocks based on this concept. So that's why I decided to teach this concept first, so that you'll understand how uh, clocks can be solved using the concept of relative speed. So see you in my uh, next lesson. Happy learning.